This is a picture of my crew. The Charles R. Finlayson crew. Charles Finlayson flew 27 bombing missions over Europe from August of 1944 to the end of World War II. Mortality rates were high during those fiery days of fighting in Europe. Finlayson's plane was hit many times, and he had so many close calls, he lost count after a while. I was on a mission to Munich one time, and the flak came in under my seat and went through the bulkhead to the navigator and killed him. We didn't know he was dead, and I went down there to try to revive him. It was a bad, bad situation. Finlayson also found his nose gunner out cold, but only because he had let his oxygen mask slip off. At 25,000 feet, that's not something you let happen. I wasn't too, you know, nice about it. I kind of whopped him once and said, wake up, boy, we got enough trouble. Although Finlayson's crew called him strict, they told him later it was one of the things that got most of them through alive. Not that there weren't times it seemed they wouldn't make it. Out of six bombing missions over Vienna, two almost ended in tragedy. The scariest was when I lost those two motors and, and, and the gas was pouring out of number two. And I was afraid it was going to catch fire. We tend to think of perils of war coming in the form of enemy bullets and missiles. However, one of Finlayson's most dangerous moments came when a bomb hung in his Bombay. I turned it over the co pot and I grabbed a walk-around oxygen bottle, and I went back there and stepped out over the open bomb bay. At first, Finlayson tried pulling the bomb loose, but it was too heavy. I looked up, and he was going like that, and I looked up, and there was an arming vein there, and I just grabbed that, and that bomb just went like that, released immediately. And I had my hand on it, and it nearly took me with it. Falling out of an airplane with a parachute is frightening enough without one is unimaginable. For making the longest bombing flight ever made by an American crew, Finlayson's group also was awarded a presidential citation. I'm glad I served, and I'm proud, too. While Charles Finlayson is proud to have served his country, he's also realistic about the horrors of war. Well, sometimes, you know, I think that wars are for young men. Because if you could have one generation live long enough, a long time, I honestly believe that you wouldn't have as many wars because it's hell. There's no doubt about it.